Greetings. Hello. <laughs> um, something of a sort of retraction in a way to my previous video about no insects. Whilst that is an observation, um, I want to make it absolutely crystal clear that that is not to spread fear. It, um, it's another presentation really of what has been manifest or shown and experienced before, and I'm talking on a personal level here. When we first have um, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, what exactly are they? Now, this is only my personal opinion on this, and I'm talking from the experience of coming out the other side of all three of those. Basically, you have a fire alarm system all over your body. The way the body works is, just go into an unfamiliar part of a town or a city, somewhere you've never been before, you may get a feeling inside you that is saying, this is not a particularly safe area, I don't feel safe. Now that may well be, your gut feeling is telling you something, which then communicates to the heart, because your heart rate has probably changed, you've probably got a more adrenaline time flowing through the body. And of course, the last part to interpret it will be the mind, the brain, depending on <coughs> where it's balanced, where it's focused, will depending on whether you'll ignore it, keep going and see what happens, or whether you'll listen to that, whether it's coming from a place of fear or whatever. But it's all about communication. So I don't think anybody actually comes into this reality as such, having anxiety, depression, or panic attacks, they're things we... It's almost like the... Where is when you step into an unknown territory, an unknown part of a city, and you have a particular feeling it's coming from your gut? Well now, this is all going on internally. At some level, you've probably began to question this reality. Things don't add up. Whatever you look at, pretty much, if you look deep enough, you'll find that things don't equate, don't make any sense. So internally, you're playing the part of that toddler that's forever asking that why, why, why. So you now have this response. And of course, what's the first thing that feels it? <laughs> so the body now interprets this through its alarm system, its nervous system. It communicates that message. Of course, the mind is not used to this new language that it's now feeling inside. But it comes down to taking personal responsibility and admitting to ourselves that We've basically opened ourselves up to new possibilities. We've began to question things. We've asked why it's the same shape. It opens up like that. It's like a seed that opens. The outer shell opens. The mind is now open. It's looking, it's searching for answers. Maybe looking externally. But the communication is feeling inside. But the mind can't interpret it's something new, a panic, a feeling of panic attack. I went through this. The first couple of times I had it, I didn't even know that was a panic attack. It was, it was only afterwards I thought, oh, that's what a panic attack is. Because I'd heard the term, never thought any more of it. And then when you actually go through it, you've got like a short circuit going on between rational and irrational. Because you're feeling something very different. Personally, if I 
stay in her and as a hermit within a, the safety and confines of a room with no anxiety, but then I've got to go outside to buy milk or bread or whatever, and I've now got to go out there. And of course, this is terror feeling comes up. This anxiety kicks in. There's a conflict now set up, a short circuit. Because you've got dielectric and magnetism, which created this hybrid, the electric, the thoughts. But it's speaking in a language that is not understood. We haven't learned that language, we've not had the experience. But if you can imagine yourself sitting in a chair, now picture in your mind that you separate yourself as a sort of an energy being and don't stand behind yourself. Now you're looking in through the back of the head, like a cinema screen that opens up. You're looking in, you're observing all those thoughts. What images are being shown in your mind? The truth actually is subjective. It cannot be anything else because the truth will be shown to you in the mind's eye, in, a, in, a, in forms and in pictures the, that you can relate to and you can understand. It does not mean that what is being presented to you actually looks like that image that you have in your mind, but it doesn't make it any less true. The true sight, the true communication is always in feeling. Feeling is healing as well. But feeling can also be damaging, harming. Because if we're in fear state, we're creating an acidic environment. If we are in a positive state, we are creating an alkaline environment. But of course you need a balance between the two, a bit like the ratio with the, shown as the analema with a much smaller, which will be, represent the acidic and the much greater um, loop of the alkaline. You've got a very small amount of alcohol inside the stomach for digestion because it's acidic. It helps to break down solid matter to go into the bloodstream. It's a breaking down process. Likewise, when you become the observer, you are breaking down the fears, the walls, the boundaries that we set that are set up for us, and the ones we add to and build upon. The negative things that we create in our mind, and then we feed with our focus, because it does cause a tension on the mind when it gets your attention. See how these words are pretty much all the same thing. Um, it all comes down to perspective because now when that alarm system is going off in the body and I'm feeling a feeling that would become anxiety if it's, if it's allowed to just explode internally and take over and affect how I think because I'm absorbing the negative side of that I'm only doing seeing the physical side I'm not. I have no focus on the spiritual, on the metaphysical aspects of it, which is its polar opposite. There is a positive to be found in it. And you can equate that to being in that um, unknown environment and something is telling you that it's hostile and that it's not a good place for you to, to be at that, at that moment and it is suggesting that you withdraw from that situation and that is the same with when you get into these debates that then become where those taking part in that it becomes an argument on, on who's right and who's wrong it's ridiculous it's like I can describe and say what I've seen but it's a secret known only to one because it's all happening in the mind's eye if I say Merkaba 
you're, you can picture a Merkaba. Now, the colours and things you put in that is the creation of your mind. It doesn't make my Merkaba any less true because that is a secret known only to you. What you see in your mind's eye, you may wish to share and describe that. But it's pictures, therefore it is art. It's spiritual, but it's expression of form. And art, of course, is subjective. But at the same time within that, there is a truth that doesn't have a physical form. Or really, even, you could say, a, a mind's eye form. It's something beyond that. I just made a hour and a half video which expands on weighing up the comments, weighing up communication with the trees yesterday, get, getting a feeling, because that's the only way I can communicate with the tree, a feeling from them, what they're saying in energy form about what's happening. And never brought this into the equation because I was in that moment I sort of fell off as it were I almost fell off I felt a sadness because I'm also aware that this organic body is part of this organic realm feels very much connected therefore when something vanishes I'm filled with a sadness I'm filled with a, a feeling of that I failed in protecting it um, but it's we're at the point almost of the uh, the fall equinox where hours of daylight and hours of darkness rebalance. It's a transformation. And how beautiful that I then watch Archaic's channel showing how 23rd of September is so significant. Followed by watching Decode the Matrix and Natalie is shown from the alchemical and the gematria aspect and guess what comes up again the number 23 and September and also the 22nd of September is significant as well but what have we got going on here it's being played out I would suggest in the material realm as a rebalancing of finances with the Vatican recalling all assets and the City of London putting out um, a desire to make it more attractive to world banking to come to London. So you're, you're having a material wealth play out of that being presented to you. How I am now interpreting the lack of insects is there is a transformation, there is a rebalancing. Nature seems to know in advance, and likewise these physical bodies. That gut feeling is the first to know, the first that lets you know. By expanding that out, and by being open to new possibilities in their search for answers, we are opening up to new frequencies. Some of those frequencies that come through that manifest as anxiety and panic attacks and depression can seem very limiting when we are focused on the negative side of it. As I said to Julia on Simplicity Revealed channel, that you've got an hour and a half of me expanding on this. She's saying about her eyesight and glasses, but consider this. Um, if you wear glasses, for example, consider 10 years ago or 5 years ago, your physical eyesight, then compared to now. Now ask the same question about your spiritual eye compared to 5 years ago or 10 years ago compared to now. Would you not say that is a rebalancing? Yes. It is a huge advantage to have clear vision with the two eyes in the material realm and operate in a material realm. But with the greater spiritual sight, the balance and how I feel about this physical reality 
has come into balance in a new way with inside myself and it changes how I feel internally to a far more balanced, more alkaline, happier state. Um, happier is the wrong word, a contented state. Because what no long, what previously did not make sense about this reality, in particular how it seems that man is going against nature and seeing it as an obstacle to overcome. My perception, as I've said before, is to see it as a diagnostic zone, a place to test out something. I'd like you to just run with the idea of this being a copy of something greater and this is a version of it because there may be something detected that might be a problem there so would it not be sensible rather than put something out there totally untested to actually in a very small area to test it out and see the results read into that what you want because clearly there is a material and a non-material, a metaphysical and a physical playouts of such things. I think you get my drift. If you're on the right frequency, you know exactly what I'm saying there. But then when I look at that pattern and I change my perspective but see the pattern, It changes a lot. Things now begin to click, begin to fit into place. I don't care whether you, what you call it. You can say diagnostic zone, you can say simulation, you can say universe, you can say biocomputer. At the end of the day, they're all labels. They're labels of the language we've got at the time. This is something that has been repeated over and over throughout history. Does a train look like an iron horse to you? And yet that was a description of a train. Because that is used in a language of a people with what they could relate to, to use to describe it. But it doesn't make it any less true. It just might seem strange from our perspective today. So I don't care about labels on anything. Um, acknowledge maybe simulation you can just replace it with the word universe or creation and because there is a communication a spiritual to me that is undeniable i have had too many experiences to, to dismiss or discount that it is some sort of communication likewise anxiety and depression and panic attacks are all a communication but how we perceive them how they affect us what we do with that new information that the body is communicating definitely has an effect i know from experience i've had that feeling where i'm gasping i've had that feeling of sheer terror of building up a mental brick wall that I, at 30 foot high that i can't get over and it's a real battle to overcome by changing the focus and not feeding that negative fear and growing that monster, in, in that particular case, as a, as a brick wall. I mean, it's not a brick wall, is it? It's just a description, an analogy. But in the mind, it's very real, whatever way you see it. But when you can see it for what it really is, and what is being communicated, you're using five senses. What's the fifth chakra? It's the throat. It's about communication. It's a blockage, surely, when it's just coming up as a, oh no, I'm having a panic attack. Oh no, I'm fearful of going outside. It's caused a huge blockage. It's caused a barrier, a very real barrier when you go through it. But when you learn that language of communication with the physical body and its interaction with the outside because why are you feeling anxiety is it because you've now opened up to a broader spectrum of frequencies therefore 
whether you know it or not. Because clearly, if you're feeling anxiety, that language is not, it's not been understood yet. But when you understand that you're picking up on a greater spectrum of frequencies of other human beings, you're now importing those feelings unknowingly. And that's why you're feeling anxiety. It's causing short circuits. But you can correct that. You can readdress that by shifting your focus, going with the heart and with the intuition. This now becomes a central processing unit. The Egyptian mummification process, clearly the brain had no significance because it's up through the nostril and skewer it out and take it out and pack it with straw. But the organs, the seven jars, the seven chakras, that surely must say something. That's your ka. Now your eighth part that's not even in the physical realm, your higher self, your ba, your ka ba. When you see when you see the ka ba, the ma, which is the French word for see, ma ka ba, you're looking at yourself effectively. We're reflecting on everything. You're seeing an energetic version of your true self. Only you know what that looks like when you see it. But the way to see it is the, is the key. It's not by starting up these electrical circuits. It's letting them settle and allowing the dialectic and the magnetic within the embodiment, the physical embodiment, to rise up and opening up that dialogue, getting the two hemispheres um, parting of the seas, as it were, letting that light, that seed break open. All manifest, they're all different descriptions, so you could say, I'm triggered by the word seed. I don't like that analogy, but that's all it is. It's just an analogy. It's two hemispheres, your Sarah Abraham, your cerebrum. Whew. So, May this give more a, a more uplifting perspective because this seems very localized from the feedback. There's a general consensus of decline in 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 numbers of insects and things. I think we can all agree on that generally. But the reasons it's happening, there clearly is bigger cycles than just seasons and a 365 and a quarter day year there's something more going on there are definitely bigger time intervals so the insects disappearing may all be part of that nature has a natural communication um, look at horse sense as an example observe the birds what they do how they can swarm and not collide into each other and, and they all suddenly fly off it's like a we'll get this idea and go um, they're responding they're communicating with nature in ways that humans have forgotten. Yet, yeah, I'm not joking, we have forgotten more than we'll ever learn, as it were. But that communication, that healing, and that communication is all in feeling. And the thoughts you put into that feeling, to add into that mix, whether they're Clear state, acidic or balanced alkaline will have a, a huge effect on the physical being anyway. And this comes down to taking personal responsibility again because how you feel will definitely affect how your organism is in its health state. You can supplement with external ingestion of various things and there's differing opinions on that um, between those that are vegan, those that are vegetarian, those that are meat eaters and so on. Um, not the scope of this, do what feels right for you at the end of the day and find a way of doing it that doesn't cause harm. That, I know that sounds a bit of a contradiction because it can be argued that oh you've killed a plant, you've killed a life. Um, Again, it's perspective, isn't it? And finding that balance between avatar and internal organisations, really. Um, and becoming a universe, singing from the same song sheets. But 
It's very hard to get anybody's degree on anything, but um, we can find a, a balance and realise that it's all subjective and it's all a beautiful experience and that is what it is all about being an experience. And wow, we've gone on for 25 minutes here, so I don't want to make this as long as um, I'm talking on Julia's channel, Simplicity Revealed. She will have a new video with a discussion on events and things that expands a lot more on this, but this is supposed to be a short video, so I'm going to say love to you all and uh, keep shining, feel no fear, because fear feeds fear, whereas uh, life loves life for, you know, um, it's all perspective, and have a bad experience, have a good experience, it's up to you, it all depends how you feel. Ta-ta for now.